Hey, Mike, how are you doing? Welcome to, like, we have another 401 Access Denied uh, podcast. And uh, an exciting topic, I think it's re- this is a really important one, because when you get into, you know, really development and people who's either starting a career in cybersecurity or people who's even changing their career, they might be already, you know, um, leaving one career, uh, job that they've done for many years and getting introduced into it. And even though season, I think it's really important that you always do self-development. One of the things I've learned you know, with, with my kids is that self-development, it's one of the best things we can do is the continuous learning. It's not something that you do once and then, you know, the careers have changed. It's no longer about having a career for 30, 40 years. You have to continually keep learning new techniques, new skills, and definitely in cybersecurity, that's something that I've been fortunate that I've seen over the time is that we keep having these new skills. We keep having the continuously learning. So today's show is all about what books you know have kind of made influence us in our careers over time to really help develop some skills or give some new ideas or you know even some fun moments that really kind of make you laugh and you know uh, or revert to some of the new things through through your past. So this really kind of is one of those to really you know help those out there into learning about you know you know things that can help them. Uh, great books because there's so many out there and there's so many ones that are you know, either complex or they're dated as well. Um, and that's what I want to make sure is that, you know, people get the books that really give, you know, make a difference. And those who have actually made a difference in, in the entire uh, security development. So uh, Mike, have you any thoughts about, you know, wh- you know how books have, 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 <laughs> have changed your life? Yeah, no, definitely. I, um, <clears throat> it's funny. First of all, continuous learning, that's a core tenant here at Cyber. Mm-hmm. So um, it's one of those things that we take very seriously. Uh, there were uh, a bunch of books um, that I read back in the early 2000s, because I'm old, mm-hmm. um, uh, <laughs> that, really had, that really had a lot of influence on me. I was a software developer at the time. Security was some this sort of thing that I was getting involved in because mm-hmm. of the, uh, just my role at this, on this particular job. And so I started reading, and um, uh, there were a couple books that sort of stand out from that time. Um, and then since then, I've really focused more on uh, blogs and other things to mm-hmm. sort of stay current than uh, necessarily reading books. But um, Bruce Schneier, Schneier's, um, and I always trip on his name, uh, <laughs> books have always been great. I read about four or five of them. Mm-hmm. Um, they all sort of merged together. I think we were joking about that a little mm-hmm. earlier. They have mm-hmm. similar themes. It's all the same voice. It's hard to keep them straight. But uh, Secrets and Lies and Beyond mm-hmm. Fear are two that stand out. Um, they really take it from a very practical level of thinking mm-hmm. about security and how to apply it. Um, and I, you know, I haven't read them in 15 years, but my guess is they stand the test of time <laughs> um, because it is really more of an abstract thinking about mm-hmm. applied security and security in depth. And there's some really good anecdotes in there um, and funny stories of you know companies getting it right, companies getting it wrong. Um, so I definitely recommend those books. Absolutely. I mean, one, that's a really important uh, kind of uh, kind of topic you just mentioned there is that books that come sometimes get too technical into mm-hmm. relying heavily on software or examples or using some, you know, uh, solutions out there. The problem I find with a lot of the books that get very technical is over time, software gets updated and it gets updated almost, you know, once a year. And even now with things like DevOps and continuous development and integration is that, you know, they get changed so often, UI features change very quickly. And ultimately, those books that have very technical focused, you know, um, kind of, you know, let's say workshops or examples, they quickly come out of date. And that's one thing I always have to be careful with is when you do uh, go into books, is that sometimes it's even important if you do get into some of the books I'll talk about today, is you have to make sure that you use the same software <laughs> examples. <laughs> right, right. That, what, that the book was based on. So the versions, it's really important that you make sure that if it says install version five, then you know it might be version seven or eight now, uh, but it's important that you stick to version five because right. slight differences could mean that you get really blocked. Right. It's interesting. I was looking through some books last night just to help, you know, to sort of uh, mm-hmm. prep for this. And I came across all of these uh, network security books that I have about like securing your <laughs> wireless network. And I was like, yeah, these were great at the time, but they're just, they're no longer even close to being relevant. Absolutely. <laughs> what you mentioned is the books that stand, you know, through time, the ones that basically are the ones, you know, have the capability of no matter what changes, they're still relevant. And it's a lot of to do with strategies and you know, um, examples and use cases. And I think those are the ones that really give, you know, people at least the, the core skill set. So one of my, one of my favorite books mm-hmm. of all time, and I actually read it years ago. And recently 
I re, you know, I re-listened to it because people, because <laughs> um, I've spent about a year and a half ago, I switched to doing audiobooks <laughs> because you know, when I'm walking, running, or driving, um, traveling. Um, the audiobooks allow me to do those. You know, I also get motion sickness when I'm reading and, and traveling, so it's not right. a good thing for me to mix. Well, I find it hard to read and drive, so yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So some people do it. I think, you know, especially in San Francisco, you know, the traffic's so bad that you're probably sitting more than you are. <laughs> um, but I've, I did switch to audiobooks and people have corrected me saying, oh, I read the book again. And they're like, no, you listened to the book again. <laughs> it's like, it's different. <laughs> so, so I did, you know, the one book that I, I highly recommend, if anyone's getting into the career and uh, looking for something to really get in, in insights, and understand about you know the core history of you know where security came from and even even one of the topics you know when we talked about passwords this book really gives you into the actual introduction of passwords and what they were used for originally so the book's called the cuckoo's egg mm -hmm. and it's uh, by an author cliff stall and it was actually goes back to uh, 1985 and cliff stall was actually he was a system administrator at uh, um, uh, was in berkeley um, in one of the labs there and over time, basically, what happened was he ended up finding an indiscrepancy in the counting system of 75 cents. And he decided, you know, he really, he's a perfectionist. He really wanted to understand. He goes into the details about, you know, why is there 75 cents uh, difference? And ultimately, what happens is a story he ends up identifying and finding out that there's actually a hacker in his systems, hmm. using his systems and using it as a like a stepping stone to gain access to other systems that were on the same network or had access to that same network. And it takes you through the journey of not just basically his work and, you know, putting together and monitoring the activity, you know, looking at all the command line outputs. And back then looking at a terminal or, or serial output was basically sending it to a printer and <laughs> looking through the command lines in a printer. So, um, or, you know, having different terminals you get access uh, uh, those through. And the story really takes us through that um, experience. It was over, I think it was over a year um, of him searching through and, you know, understanding about what this person was actually, or which systems they were hacking into, uh, the techniques that they used and some vulnerabilities and software that they'd used as well. And it's a fascinating story, just taking you through that whole time. And it, he it was involved with all the different agencies and, you know, FBI who didn't want to know about it because they were more interested in, you know, multi-million dollar crime. And this was only 75 cents. Right. So there's a big difference into, you know, getting their cooperation <laughs> and then getting involved in the NSA and the CIA. And of course, um, what was it? Uh, it's not their bailiwick was, that was the common term he was using, which is like, you know, it's not their responsibility because it's either not local or it's local or it's state. And uh, so it got very complicated, but it was a really fascinating story. And ultimately what he ended up finding was, is that the uh, person, uh, the name was Marcus, um, was basically uh, based in Germany. So he was tracking a spy who was using computers for espionage. And he tracked him through, all basically through satellite links, undersea cables back into Germany. And they were actually working uh, basically, you know, let's say just uh, uh, what we call as mercenary hackers that were selling their services to basically East Germany at the time, uh, uh, you know, for intelligence information about nuclear, you know, systems, military tracking and stuff. And they were selling that intelligence back over to the KGB in East Germany. So it's a really fascinating story. And it really shows into, you know, the techniques were used in order to gain passwords or some of the early password uh, uh, kind of systems were in place and what they were doing in order to gain past that. So for me, you know, it's a fascinating book. And when it basically, um, you know, I, somebody kind of mentioned to it recently again, I thought, oh, you know, that was a great read when I, when I read it, was it, you know, 15 plus years ago, I decided, you know, take it off. So if you're really getting into this industry and you really want a foundation, because I think it's really important to understand the history. So if you're going to learn something, it's important to understand, you know, where it came from, how we got to where we are. And those techniques that were used by, by hackers back in, in 1985 are still being used today. You know, still, yeah, I, it's, it hasn't Yeah, I agree. Because I think, I think you, you know, we were talking about book standing the test of time and strategies and so on and so forth. I think a lot of it comes down to explaining the whys rather mm -hmm. than the, the specific what's, you know, it's sort of the how things worked or whatever. And then you, you sort of abstract from that, like how can you apply that mm -hmm. in, in current times? Um, Cause I think that's what a lot of security is, is looking at like, well, how does this 
break down, even if it was a long time ago and it was this different sort of system, how can I apply that to this? And so understanding the more of the, the, the under the underpinnings of that is really the important part. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's the difference between, you know, driving a car and knowing how the engine works. And it's something that I've always applied, you know, and, and we have to be correct as well. You know, the term hacker sometimes is mis, misunderstood and misabused mm-hmm. ab- a lot by the media. Um, I consider my, I'm myself a hacker. I'm a, I'm a person who likes to pull things apart and understand how it works. And can I actually modify it to use it for another purpose? Mm-hmm. And this is ultimately, you know, hackers in many cases, most hackers out there are actually doing their skills and using their skills for good deeds, for actually helping um, some might be a bit more direct <laughs> than others, <laughs> right. um, but um, ultimately the majority out there and th- they get the bad name from the few who abuse it. And I prefer to call them criminal hackers or, you know, crim- cyber criminals. Mm-hmm. Um, use the term, you know, from, from they're actually abusing their skills from malicious activities. So it's really important that we do clarify that when we talk about hackers in general, that not all are bad and many are using their skills for good. And this gets to my next book. And I've got the fortunate... Idols um, at uh, uh, was DefCon uh, um, last DefCon uh, because uh, this book is the Cult of the Dead Cow by Joseph Men. And if you're ever familiar with Loft or at uh, Task um, and a lot of the kind of well-known, um, you know, basically cult. These are the cult hackers, the ones that really define what it means in the industry mm-hmm. um, over time. And it really gets into you know, for me, I was really in the nineties was messing around with computer games, understanding and programming and really getting into the industry in the kind of mid late nineties. And this is really where, you know, that cult and that whole, you know, was it, uh, uh, you know, uh, was over to, uh, was it 2000, uh, or 19, you know, 9, 900 or I, I, was it, uh, the different kind of elements of the, uh, the books and the cults and the magazines was going around that, um, over 9,000 is one of them. Yes. Yeah. And the other ones uh, will come to me later. But uh, basically, the book basically takes you through the journey of all of those characters that came through the loft and came through the cult of the dead cow. And uh, kind of even to the point where uh, those uh, individuals that was on, you know, in that group uh, were speaking at the event uh, last year in DEF CON. And it was fascinating for me, you know, listening to all of the stories um, that they took through the years. Um, about all the tools that they'd created. Um, and uh, it was, it was a, it's, a, it's a great read. If you really want to know kind of the, the cult and the history and the crafts and the people that really defined our industry today, um, that book is what takes you through that journey. Hmm. Sounds like a great one. I'll, uh, I'll put that on my list. It definitely, definitely is. And, you know, it's fortunate, you know, get, get to meet and, and chat with them. And, uh, you know, it's, for me, it was definitely, you know, take me through um, the years, especially I, I worked... <laughs> on uh, well-known products you're probably familiar with PC Anywhere and Carbon Copy. Mm-hmm. Um, these are some of the products that I used to be a product owner for. I used to be managing those products. Um, and uh, we competed with, with AtTask and some of their remote tools that they had at the time. And, uh, you know, listening to some of the you know, discussions and from their view, especially when I was on the other side of the picture, because uh, uh, one of the things I was involved into one of the famous uh, scenarios was when PC Anywhere uh, source code got leaked and then we had the vulnerabilities and we had the task force in order right. to re- recover from that. Um, so that was, you know, brought back a lot of memories back then. And, uh, you know, reading the book uh, was also definitely a very, very good journey through, through the history. So, so that's something that definitely, you know, it should be mandatory. Those, those two books are mandatory reading. <laughs> the next book is a bit more technical um, and it's basically Peter Kim. And uh, what he has created is a, uh, the series of books called the hacker's playbook, basically taking it like from a football game. Um, you know, and we're talking about American football, not, not the, the, <laughs> the, the true football of soccer. That's uh, what I call football, right. which we actually use our feet with. Um, but we're talking about the football that you, you use with your hands and, uh, and wear lots of protective gear, which, you know, <laughs> makes them bigger. Topic for a different day. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're talking about the American football and he's got these books series called the hackers playbook. And uh, I mean, they are great. They, they get into a lot of the tools and techniques. The good thing is they go through the series of things like reconnaissance, you know, the passive assessments that you mm-hmm. want, you know, get an understanding. Cause there's a lot of different techniques that we use in different areas from, you know, if you're into reverse engineering and doing malware reverse engineering, where you have a more of a development background or you get into, you know, um, social engineering 
and you're doing basically, you know, the human side of hacking where you're actually trying to uh, get people to share information with you. Um, or you're into basically privilege elevation where you're trying to steal uh, passwords or use tools like Mimikatz and other types of uh, password tracking techniques or Hashcat. So it really gets into, and it still takes you through the playbook is really how you get one foot in the door. Then it takes you through, okay, how do I laterally move? How to elevate until ultimately you get the keys to the kingdom and access to everything. So the book takes you through all those different techniques. Word of caution though is because it is technical and it does kind of refer to a lot of you know tools out there such as Kali Linux, um, you know, into hash hashcat. The good thing is a lot of the command line references still relevant, which you know mm -hmm. the good thing is those those commands uh, still you know do the test over time. But the ones uh, that have interfaces like Burp or other tools that's in there, um, Beef, uh, Cobalt, all of those, the UIs do update and they do change. So a word of caution mm -hmm. is that um, the book is great. It is very educational and it will actually understand a lot of the techniques, but the examples, um, you have to be aware that they do get dated very quickly. Um, so my recommendation is if you are going to follow through in some of those examples, uh, make sure you use the versions that was the book was referenced at the time. That's right. one of the important things I have. But it's a great series. There's three books. Um, the second one is probably the one I'd recommend that people are going to buy. Um, it's the one that basically gives you those techniques, you know, the series. The third one is more for the red team focus. It just focuses more on the red team techniques. Um, and uh, But, you know, the second one is probably the one that takes you through a good series of lateral moves in, in, in getting in the industry where the the third one is more focused at that red team specific uh, element, which is really the offensive type of hackers are the ones that's really, you know, trying to do it from the outside in rather than those who's looking really to understand vulnerabilities and, and uh, techniques. So that one definitely is, is kind of mandatory reading as well. And, and, and something you do have to have, you know, your, your equipment, your laptop, you do have to have access to the tools. It will take you through some of those examples and, and, and teach you a lot about how to use them. Um, the last book, which I find very fascinating, which um, I was in between, so this was the, the challenge that I had. Um, but the last book, which really kind of got me going into my childhood and a lot of, also had a direct um, kind of, you know, I've been experienced uh, a lot of what happened in the book over the time because I'm based in Tallinn, Estonia. Mm -hmm. And the book is Sandworm uh, by Andy Greenberg. And that book itself, is really kind of when you think about, uh, it takes you through a journey in history as well. It goes through um, a lot of um, really kind of all the different events in Eastern Europe from the likes of the Ukraine attacks um, into Estonia, uh, which of course I was you know, in Tallinn at the time and, and had firsthand experience in the uh, 2007 cyber attack against Estonia. And getting into that of Georgia, um, and then back to Ukraine and talking about things like WannaCry, um, talking about not Petya. So the book itself is great. And, and it's one of the books that, at least from the Estonian perspective, that was very technically accurate on the Estonian events. And, you know, reading a lot about peers and other people that, you know, good friends of mine in the industry as well that were referenced in the book. Um, it was a very well, very good, you know, covers the technical portions really good. Um, hmm. Very kind of not into very detail, but it covers them very well that you get to understand about exactly what was happening. Um, it covers things like Stuxnet as well, which um, had some involvement uh, into some of the vulnerability side of things in the patch management portion um, of the zero days that were identified then. So I think I was between that and zero day. That was the two books. Ah. Um, but ultimately the one that I decided on was, was the sandworm. And the reason why was that sandworm, the reference sandworm actually comes from um, uh, uh, basically, if you ever heard the uh, planet Arrakis, mm -hmm. uh, which comes from the movie Dune, Dune, which the sandworm is, of course, the reference to, to the sandworms in Dune. And it was the book that actually got me to pull out my old dusty copy of, <laughs> of Dune. <laughs> and from, I was in the night, early 1980s, late 70s, I think it was somewhere around that time. Mm -hmm. um, and watching that movie kind of made a relevance and kind of really kind of realization into, you know, some of those cults uh, um, and really kind of significant things that really were visionary at the time. And uh, so that was a book that really got me pulling out the old dusty DVDs. I think it was even a CD at the time. <laughs> oh, wow. uh, lucky enough, it wasn't on a VCR cassette. You know, right, 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 right. <laughs> uh, in the same, same era as me. Um, 
but I, had, I, had, I think it was a CD, maybe a DVD, but I was able to find it in my like cellar cupboard, pull off the dust, mm -hmm. uh, throw it back in again uh, and watch it. And uh, of course, I, it was it was a you know kind of blast from the past, particularly to my youth because I remember watching it was when I was very young. Yeah. Uh, um, and there was a lot of those movies that were really cult movies that you know took us through. But um, at the time, I never really compared it to you know hacking or cybersecurity until of course Sandworm uh, book kind of really made the association. And uh, the Sandworm group, of course, which the book references, um, uh, you know, were they taken uh, their campaign names. Mm -hmm. um, basically from, from the movie Dune. So it was really, it was a really great read and definitely, you know, for me, um, a lot of those events on Stuxnet into uh, the Estonian cyber attack and also Ukraine, they were all for me, you know, technically, technically very accurate, which I really enhanced and, and elevated the book up for me because sometimes I've read references where they were, you know, vague or uh, incorrect in some regards, uh, but this one was, was, was excellent. So another great book to read. Sounds great. I, um, there's a couple that I'll definitely be adding to my list and, and listening to, although probably the more technical ones are definitely worth reading if you're, <laughs> it's tough to listen to a command line. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, if, if, if it's command lines, it's, they stand history. They, they are good because you know, they're always backwards compatible, but when it gets into the graphical interface, I would be, be very careful. Yeah, uh, I did, I've read a lot of books on Wireshark and um, on Kali and, and, and you know, and very quickly you you get stuck and you're like doing a workshop and you're like oh, that isn't the same version that I've got or this right. this menu option doesn't exist in mine what's going on and you know, and then or it changed the name um, so it sometimes can get you stuck and and unless you you've got that ability to go back versions um, you always you know word of caution but I also have two special mentions of two books that I think are also important and, you know I did mention zero day. Mm -hmm. uh, from Kim Zitter, I think it is, it is also a great book. You know, because it focuses purely into the Stuxnet scenario, yep. uh, which of course you know was one of the you know first major weapons um, used in a you know a kinetic uh, type of, of cyber war. Um, a great, or at least one of the first ones we know about. Well, one of the first ones we know, about, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Because a lot of time attributions are also visibility and transparency. We sometimes don't know. Yeah. They're always kept in the background. Mm -hmm. So, and another special mention is um, social engineering. Uh, Science of Human Hacking, I think it's called, mm -hmm. which is from Chris Hadnagy. Um, also a great read um, as well, because it really gets, it takes you into, it doesn't use a lot of um, you're getting into the tool sets, other than I think it does get into Dave Kennedy's trusted sec, uh, uh, social engineering toolkit, it talks about it briefly. Um, but it does a very good job of talking about the philosophy and the theories and the, the skill sets. And, you know, the, the, basically a lot of the things that makes, you know, uh, social engineering and those penetration testers or those who's looking for the human side of hacking, it does really provide a very, very good thorough um, knowledge base into you know, some of the things you need to be thinking about if you're actually going into reception area mm -hmm. and you're trying to get past the security guard or you're trying to get into the building. It goes through those in great detail and great examples. And also, you know, uh, makes you laugh. It's, it's just some comedy moments in there as well. So um, I always say that it's always a good thing is when you, and it makes you laugh, um, especially if you're doing what I'm doing. You're, you're walking down the street with a pair of headsets on, <laughs> and it's an audio book, and all of a sudden you start laughing at a right. random door, and there's people around you. Yeah, uh, that definitely uh, you know is, is, a, is a funny moment. Uh, so yep. I think it's books that these books are definitely you know for me anyone who's in this career you know is looking for something you know for the next reading or self development, especially when when people's at home right now. Um, and have maybe a little bit more time. If you're not listening to podcasts like these, which are fantastic, <laughs> um, definitely pick up one of those books. Um, it'll definitely enlighten you, give you a good journey through time and uh, give you a lot of good knowledge and skill sets on the other side. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, social engineering is one that's really, that's where I think I got my start in a lot of ways was learning mm -hmm. more about that side of it and how fascinating that was. And there were a number of management books um, that were recommended to me over the years that talk about how to sort of, mm -hmm. how to manage people and sort of their um, motivations. And um, it has direct correlations because it's the same thing. People want to be helpful, you know, in figuring that stuff out. Um, I'm trying to remember a couple of them, but they're not, they're just not coming to mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Sometimes uh, it's hard. I, I do exactly. Get that. I get the moments of like, oh, you know, I think it's age. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't I, think it, age. I think it's just, I think it's just how long ago it was since I've read those books. I mean, no, I, no, no. 
it's it's not about how long ago it is. I think it's that we've our brains we've we've got so much knowledge in our brains that you know in order to make room for new knowledge mm -hmm. we have to let we have to let some go. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. I'm, there's definitely stuff that's been swapped out to, to <laughs> <laughs> and deleted, archived, archived. <laughs> All right. But absolutely. I mean, uh, if the books, I, I, I wasn't for me in my career, I was always more of a hands-on person at the beginning of my career. And I do mm -hmm. regret not taking the opportunity to read more. And, uh, you know, for now, you know, and things like Audible and Kindle and, you know, I love getting, I do, I mean, every time I, I, I get a Kindle book or I do an audio book, I love it. Mm -hmm. I will actually purchase the physical copy as well. Um, it was even harder actually with the cult of the dead cow. I first had it in a Kindle, then I went to Auditable. Mm -hmm. And then when I met them at DEF CON, <laughs> <laughs> I was faced with a challenge into how do I get them to sign my Auditable book? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and uh, I think it was Dildog actually mentioned, Dildog's one of the, one of the characters, one of the kind of uh, guys that was there. And he mentioned, he's like, what do we just do an, you know, like, you know, an audio recording? Um, so we, <laughs> And uh, eventually, we, well, I end up buying the physical book as well. So I end up three versions of the book on different formats. Wow. Um, but yeah, that's one thing that, you know, I do tend to do is if I, if I really enjoy a book, I will get the physical copy as well, just for, you know, kind of the references and the passion. And, and, and also, you know, kudos to the, to the authors, because um, I myself, you know, I've, I've you know, um, authored a few books as well. And I know the effort and the time. And, and um it really kind of you know the sacrifices it goes into to creating mm -hmm. a book um to share it with others um it is difficult and not easy so um definitely a, a shout out to the authors out there that really spend the time and, and put effort into creating great books yeah no definitely um and i definitely encourage uh buying the book uh i worked uh briefly at or not briefly for a while at the national library of medicine uh on their digital library and one of the first things i learned was paper lasts way longer than digital formats um <laughs> so uh ha having a paper having the paper copy is is definitely worthwhile yeah absolutely agree so i think i mean for yep. the for those who's listening i think that's is a perfect way to you know um if hopefully these books and there was we did have a shout out to the community out there and they did come also back with their own recommendations um there's a couple of kevin uh, mitnick's books which are awesome as well um you know kevin he's quite a character in the industry fantastic guy mm -hmm. um has you know a you know very, very fine, you know, amazing history in our industry. <laughs> right, um, right. Has, has spent some time at the other side of the, you know, the fence. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, his books are, are, are great reading and uh, very educational. Um, and then it was also Bruce Snyder was also from the community who recommended quite a few of his right. books as well. So definitely Bruce and, and Kevin, their books are great um, in addition to the ones we've talked about. So I think for the audience, for those listening, really hopefully you enjoyed the discussion. Hopefully these books will give you some, you know, good things to, to really put on the backlog of things, you know, because I've got a backlog of things to read. Hopefully right. this will give you some, some good things to think about. And hopefully um, you get into reading. And if you're starting the industry, we welcome you. Uh, we need more people. We need definitely more people in the industry, um, new talents, new ideas, uh, new passion. So, um, you know, learning, continuous learning is what we need and definitely will make a difference. So, Awesome. Mike, great to, to chat with you again. It's great yeah. being here. Love your image in the background. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Put him in the village at, at the open. Yeah. Um, and uh, awesome. And uh, looking forward to speaking to you again in the next episode. Yeah, so, definitely. Always a pleasure talking to you. Talk absolutely. To you Likewise. Talk to you soon.